Happy Fourth of July, smart people. Today is the day that Thomas Jefferson et al. invented America. Kelly got me this American flag hat from a Cracker Barrel in Tennessee. Name something more American than that, Meow Meow. I dare you. The only acceptable answer is probably heart attack. Anyways, I made one of those tier ranking things. We're going to be ranking some physicists today. I got the idea from Flammable Maths, who got the idea from everyone else who's made this kind of video on YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to structure this in a way that I think will minimize the number of people I offend slash upset, uh, because I'm not including any physicists that are still alive, because, you know, I don't think any famous physicists would ever watch this video, but if they did, and I ranked them low, the fifth law of thermodynamics says don't burn your bridges. So, um, the way that this is going to be structured is very subjective. It's not going to be based off of who objectively had the most impactful theories of science that had profound consequences. No, it's going to be more so who impacted my life more, who got me, who inspired me to get into physics, who kept me here once I was in, that kind of thing. Probably tell a couple stories, drink a little summer shanty. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have 16 physicists. Some of them, I don't know, I wouldn't really count as physicists. It's a bit adjacent. But, I mean, come on. Are you really going to take a tear-making video that seriously? It's close enough, okay? So, the first one we're going to do, I haven't actually made this yet. I'm going to be making this on the spot. Uh, but I do already know there's only going to be one person in S tier. One, and one person alone. You probably already know who that is. It's your boy, Richard Feynman. Uh, no one else is going to be S tier. S tier is like... You know how when you start looking for a significant other to spend your time with, no one's going to be perfect. The only perfect woman out there is my mom, and then everyone else is like a notch under. So that's, that's Feynman. Feynman is my mom. But everyone else is going to be A through D tier. The reason for this is that Feynman's just impacted my life so much more than anyone else. I, I, I don't consider myself great at explaining things, but I, I've gotten a lot better than I used to be, I think. Some people, when you start learning more complicated things, it's just, it's some kind of nature to where you want people to know how hard it was to learn and how hard it is. Some people don't do this, but you know what I mean. Like, it's like, I, I, I struggled to learn this. I want to see the fear in your eyes of how complicated this sounds. But then you come across people like Feynman who win Nobel Prizes, have QED, and have all these revolutionary ideas and tricks to problem solving, and then you see his videos on YouTube where it's him explaining these really not that interesting subjects in the most creative and uh, just exciting ways. Like, have you heard him explain what a fire is? It blows my mind. Feynman, man, he was someone who could popularize science, but he also got a Nobel Prize. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. So let's move on. Uh, I'm going to go in no particular order here. Let's just go ahead and pick... Who do I want to do? Let's do Lorenz. Let's do Count Dooku over here. Lorenz? Hmm. I don't know where I'm going to put him yet. So if you don't know who, who Lorenz is, I don't know what his first name is, but um, he's the father of one of the famous, probably the most famous transformation that you could do in physics, aside from like coordinate transformations, which is the Lorenz transformation. Whenever you work with tensors or four vectors or whatever and things like quantum field theory or general relativity and you expect things to transform as tensors, under your breath you're kind of saying, as under the transformations, under the Lorentz transformations. You know, people for some reason always forget to mention what group of transformations they're considering. Anyways, this isn't a tensor calculus video. There, there's no relativity without Lorentz transformations. It's knowing how things change if you go into a different reference frame. And there's that old joke. There's the... Um, the other Lorenz, the one without a T in the name, L-O-R-E-N-Z, instead of T-Z, I think that's the Lorenz Force one. That's a different Lorenz. He was, um, the joke is that he was one T away from greatness. So, I'm going to go ahead, I might shuffle these around a little bit. I'm going to put him in C tier for now. It may be bumped up, it's definitely not going down, but uh, he's just cool because it's like, I love tensors. And Lorentz transformations are cool. It's like it's like a, one of the poster childs of relativity. Okay, let's go ahead and go to... This is Lagrange, I believe. I picked all of these. I just forget faces. It's not like when you're doing equations, you're just staring at their Facebook. Not that they have Facebook. So Lagrange... Uh, I guess I'll do Lagrange and Hamilton at the same time. So do they get placed at the same spot? I don't think so. I don't think those formalisms are, yeah, they're equivalent, but you, I would say you definitely use Lagrangians. 
it's a bit more tough than I thought. I'm gonna rank LaGrange up Let me just preface this by saying that everyone here I have a lot of respect for and I, I look up to in some way. So this is ranking the best of the best in my eyes, not like, this person sucks. So that's not the case. Um, so yeah, how about we have these tiers and then as you go farther to the right, it's like closer to the next down, I guess. So let's put Lagrange here. I put him right before Lorenz. No, I'll put him above Lorenz. Sorry, Lorenz. And then I'll put Hamilton after Lorenz. So the reason for this being, you know, Lagrangians, you use them all the time in field theory. It's kind of funny because in, after you finish classical mechanics, it's like, oh my God, thank God I'm done with Lagrangians and Hamiltonians. And then you take quantum mechanics, and it's like, well, Hamiltonians are back. Shit, well, at least there's no Lagrangians anymore. And then you take quantum field theory, and you're like, well, okay, cool. <laughs> Wish I paid attention more in classical mechanics. Lagrangians are manifestly Lorentz invariant. That's why they're ahead of... Hamiltonians in my in my eyes. Okay, now let's go to Planck. No, let's get this one out of the way. I included Tesla for fan service, really. He, I get it, he was great. He offered another type of current. Uh, now that makes two types of currents that I don't know how to build circuits out of or using. Um, he, because of him, I found out Edison was a dick, but you know, he never really influenced my life too much. I know it's sacrilege to do this, but I'm gonna put Tesla here. Again, best of the best, but as far as impacting my life goes and inspiration goes, he just never really did too much for me. Um, next, I'm going to go for, let's do, let's do Schrodinger. So Schrodinger, I mean, <laughs> I, I have a terrible memory. I'm gonna put him in B tier. Um, I have an absolutely terrible memory, but there's like a set of equations that I will just never forget. Some of them are Maxwell's equations. The Schrodinger equation is one of them. Not to mention, what gets me through classes or what gets me pumped to take certain classes is having a milestone that I'd like to reach with them. So for quantum mechanics, it's seeing the Schrodinger equation. So I look ahead and I see some equation that I want to be able to understand one day. So with quantum mechanics, I couldn't wait to understand what all that stuff meant, what the h-bar was, what the, why, why do you write it as a differential equation sometimes, and then just with the, the Hamiltonian operators. It was just, it was a milestone that I wanted to be able to understand. So he's up there for me. Um, speaking of milestones, let's go ahead and put Maxwell. I'm gonna put Maxwell in B tier as well, just for the, for the exact same logic, the Maxwell's equations. I understand that he didn't really write all of them, and in fact, the first batch of those equations is very different. Uh, so I guess under here, let's, let's put Maxwell and Ampere and Faraday and Gauss, whatever. Okay, so next, let's do, uh, let's do Noether. Noether is A tier. What? Noether's 100% A tier, let me tell you why. Why? There's something that's just so pretty to me about the fact that Noether's theorem, start, like if you say it out loud, you really just speak it in a sentence. Half of the sentence is purely mathematical. So it's just this abstract mathematical idea. And then the other half is tangible physics. The other theorem says that for every global continuous symmetry, something is conserved. Global continuous symmetry, is just, it's just got math written all over it. She's more of a mathematician. That's why I said some of this is a bit adjacent, but it, the consequences are used all the time in theoretical physics. Because if you have something like um, a continuous global symmetry that's say under rotations, the conserved quantity is angular momentum. So you start with something super abstract and you end with something physical. I think that that's so cool. So she's A tier. It, it's kind of, maybe it's weird having a mathematician as A tier for a physics ranking, but I don't really care. I mean, she took math to a new level with the abstract algebra, with like the group and ring theory and, and whatnot, but then just with the applications to theoretical physics, with the idea of conserved charges from Noether's theorem, it's just, I just think it's really pretty going to school for theoretical physics, what can you expect? Uh, the next one, let's do Hawking. Hawking is definitely A tier. I'm gonna put him above uh, Noether though. So Stephen Hawking is A tier. The reason being, um, you know, no one here, no one in this list is still, still living, unfortunately. I wish Stephen Hawking was, man, I miss him. That was a sad day for me. But uh, people like him and Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku, the way that they explain things on Netflix and all those shows just got me so excited to learn physics and really 
made it so that I wanted to take that jump from biology to physics. Uh, without them and what, without watching their stuff, I don't know what I would have done. So he made a huge impact on my life because I don't know if I would have done physics if it wasn't for me stumbling upon his like Into the Universe with Stephen Hawking. I don't know how many times I've watched all of those episodes, so yeah, Stephen Hawking is up there. He deserves to be. So next we're going to do Fermi. I'm going to put him in B tier, but uh, all the way up on B tier. So let's, there we go. So he's, ba he's almost A tier, but not quite. Um, the thing with Fermi was, he's, he's credited with being like the last of the dying breed of physicists who were both a theorist and an experimentalist. He's like one of the fathers of the weak interaction theory. I mean, obviously things like fermions are named after him, Fermi statistics. He's just made such a huge impact on physics. I know I said I wasn't focusing on impact necessarily, but I just think it's, it's pretty badass to be both a theorist and an experimentalist at the same time. And the Fermi problems are always fun too, right? Uh, next, let's do Vera Rubin. I'm gonna put her. Um, I'm gonna put her B tier as well, but above Fermi. Vera Rubin is was technically an astronomer, but she was the person credited with. Um, she was one of the first people to give evidence that dark matter exists. And when I was first getting into physics, I was looking up all those buzzwords and popular science things. Uh, like dark matter, string theory, all that stuff. And when I was learning more about dark matter, I came across her name and the whole... I, I convinced myself that I knew more about dark matter for learning about this, but, you know, she was studying rotational velocity of, of galaxies. And basically you have like a set amount of mass in a galaxy and it's rotating at a certain speed. And just like how if you're on a playground with one of those little spinny things that you hold on to, if you spin it faster, you have to hold on tighter. Spin it too fast, you go flying. Well, she found that the rotational speed of the galaxies with all the mass, the, the mass can't hold on to anything. In that sense, it's just gravitational attraction. But um, they, they were spinning way too fast to contain all that matter. It should have been spewing out from the galaxy. So they realized that the, the, the mass just didn't add up. There had to be more there with more gravity, which was huge supporting evidence that um, dark matter existed. Now, she wasn't the person that posited the existence of dark matter. I think that was Fritz Zwicky. Neither of them got Nobel Prizes, which I think is a bit unfortunate, but uh, she also, it's kind of, I, I think I'm pretty um, obsessed with physics. I have a physics YouTube channel, but it, it's a bit easier in my case too, because I mean, I have the support from you and, and we have this little community and my family and all that stuff. And, but it would be a different scenario if no one else wanted you to be here, like if you just weren't welcome like she was, or like she felt. I think she applied to Princeton, and there's this story where they said that Princeton doesn't hire women. Like, that's a ah, different time. Um, but anyways, moving on from that, let's do your boy Dirac. I'm gonna put... I'll put Dirac, he's A tier, for sure. I'm gonna put him above no there though. Actually, I'm gonna put him. Yeah, above no there, but before Hawking. So Hawking was one of the fathers. Or Hawking, um, Dirac was one of the fathers of quantum field theory. He gave us the Dirac equation, which was like the next step up from the Klein-Gordon equation, which was like our, our relativistic theory of quantum mechanics. And I could not wait to be able to understand it. I saw like the D with the slash in it. I was like, what the hell is that slash doing here? What did it get canceled out from? So, I mean, that you mix relativity and quantum mechanics. You say that, you say those two words to any physics student and get a little, they get a little sweaty, a little excited. So Dirac just made him kiss. I think that that's awesome. So he deserves to be A tier. Um, let's do Planck. Planck, one of the fathers of quantum mechanics, but I mean, he gave us H-bar, that's pretty cool. I now know one more letter of the Maltese alphabet than I ever did. That brings us to a grand total of one letter of the Maltese alphabet that I know. Um, I'll put him as B tier, just because, you know, you learn about him. He was kind of annoying to learn about in statistical mechanics. It was cool. I think he was his was the, the version that kind of corrected the ultraviolet catastrophe. I, I, I like Fermi more than I like Planck. I'm sorry. 
Uh, okay, that leaves us with three more. So we'll do, this is John Wheeler. Wheeler's a cool guy. I don't remember what that guy was in Harry Potter who, like, collected the, um, the important students, the students who had a lot of promise, and Harry Potter was going to be, like, part of his collection. Do you remember that? Well, John Wheeler kind of reminds me of that because he was the PhD advisor for, like, so many famous physicists. He was Richard Feynman's advisor. He was Hugh Everett's advisor. Hugh Everett was the person who was, like, um, came up with the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. He was Wald's advisor. Wald has, like, one of the comprehensive books on general relativity. Uh, Kip Thorne. Kip Thorne was the a GR specialist guy. He was also one of the executive producers on Interstellar. Not to mention John Wheeler coined the terms black hole and uh, wormhole. Now, I heard that he call, started calling them black holes once someone in the audience got tired of him calling them gravitationally completely collapsed objects. I think that that rolls off the tongue, but whatever. Black holes it is. So... Out of respect, I, I just think that that's a cool amount of trivia. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put in B tier, but towards the end of C tier. He gets B tier just because, you know, he brought up my boy Feynman. It's talking about Princeton. I think he taught there. Okay. Now we got Curie. Curie's just a badass. <laughs> it's like, um, she didn't just get one Nobel Prize. She got two Nobel Prizes, and they were in different fields. So imagine getting your first Nobel Prize and she's like, oh yeah, I think I got a couple of those laying around somewhere. <laughs> um, she was one of the pioneers of radioactivity. Um, and she also was able to put it to practice, even though it was just now being understood. So she, because of her, we understand like x-rays and things like that. She also died from something radiation related. I don't remember what it was. I don't know if I ever knew what it was, but I guess she died doing what she loved. So I'll put her B tier. Um, I just think it's badass to have... She was the first woman to get her Nobel Prize, and she got two. That's just so cool. Uh, I'll put her above Maxwell, before Schrodinger. And the final one, your boy, Albie Einstein. For me, Albert Einstein was the closest to being S tier, but not quite. Feynman has to stand by himself, I'm sorry. Um, there's those people that you grow up with in physics that you look up to and you want to, like, you, you look up all those buzzwords like the string theory and the dark matter, dark energy, all that stuff, and Einstein's theory of relativity. And then as you go along, as you go further in physics, you start to outgrow some of that stuff. Like, you don't, want, you don't read those pop science books anymore. Um, and I kept waiting for that to happen with, with Einstein, being like, oh, is Einstein only famous to people who don't know physics? like a lot of other people might be, like people who have crazy ideas or whatever, but, you know, the people who are actually in the field at the frontier, he's, he's, maybe he's just another physicist. And it's, I mean, now I'm going into my second year of grad school, still not too far, but he still, general relativity still blows my mind every time I look at it. I mean, I started a whole series on tensor calculus just because of how much I love general relativity. So he's going to be A tier. Uh, I'm sorry, Hawking, but i got to put Einstein a little bit above you. But you're still A tier. You're still an A in my book. So that is my tier. Let me know in the comments section what you would have done, what your rank would have been, and why. And I will see you guys there.